Hi, Jing. Very happy to meet all of you. Good evening, sir. We have one more minute. Uh, let us wait for a few minutes. Uh, let us wait for a few minutes. Till so then, I just I play their small video. Just two minutes. Let us wait for five, uh, three minutes. Till then, just I'm playing and waiting. Who can explain who is a There are so many people doing music and teaching their uh, they start giving training how to uh, do hosting or CPT or CPT. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, good evening So, team, today we are going to uh, talk about uh, uh, two aspects. Uh, we will try to close it by 10 o'clock. Uh, the first aspect is we are going to talk about uh, the psychology case study preparation. Many students are preparing the case study. Any models uh, which is being followed? Most of the time, uh, we may not, uh, the students may not know practically how to put the things in uh, paper. So uh, we thought we can have an in-depth session on that. So uh, over, over to Vanita, ma'am. Manita, she is representing MOCAR Delhi. So uh, I'm very, very uh, happy to introduce uh, to all of you, Dr. Vanita. So uh, she, is having a, she is having extensive experience in psychology. And she was, uh, uh, she is having a very long uh, service as a, a school counselor and also on uh, various other uh, capabilities. So, Vanita uh, ma'am, over to you ma'am. Thank you sir for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my experience and of course, under your guidance, I would like to um, thank you Tabassu, thank you, that's nice to see. Um, my other uh, device I was trying to uh, start. let me see if it works but anyways I'll try my level best to uh, Baba phone so, yeah. so, uh, good evening friends uh, it's a very important session 
to discuss about case history or case study the methodology that we generally follow to understand the basics of the person who has come to meet the psychologist or anybody for that matter let's start suppose somebody comes so or you meet somebody somewhere outside you have not met that person before right you have not met that person before your first instinct is to know little more about that person before you reveal your identity right so what generally in technological terms we call this case study and it is very important thing very important method to understand the other person's psyche i hope i am audible i hope i am audible anybody uh -huh. can yeah thank you so very important aspect we are going to discuss today what happens when in school counseling other counseling you all are going you all are learning so yeah thank you harshal you all are doing so well in your lives and yet wonderful to know that you all are learning and one of the oh, basic things that, one of Very the basic nice. things that we all Very learn nice. may request everybody to mute uh, themselves it will be easy for us to communicate yeah so um, one of the major one of the major aspects of uh, knowing each other is an introduction when we talk about introduction in uh, technical terms it's called knowing the person little more in depth is called case study or we say case history it has very important role to play especially when it comes to school teachers organizers hr people anybody what we want to create a record of the persons whereabouts where they have coming from what is their childhood history if you have seen it's a very organized way of collecting data about the person we are interested in knowing so one of the the moment the person steps in or in fact there are proper formats which are typed and kept in uh, hospitals in um, uh, counseling centers in um, uh, even the doctors these days if you have small children and if you have gone uh, to meet a pediatrician they always have and nowadays the software editions are also available the doctors they write the data it's to be it's a record of progress also it starts with simple things like knowing the name of the student uh, sorry knowing the name of the person who has come uh, vanita ma'am vanita ma'am please uh, i made you focus yeah, I, i hope th this is fine sir yes ma'am yes ma'am ji sir thank you so very important aspect is that we should have a record the moment a person comes to meet you even even especially in the professional setting even if it is your uh, meeting for 5 minutes that somebody is brought maybe if you are working with a um, school the teacher subject teacher or the class teacher has brought the child for 5 minutes what is the first thing that we would like to know is which class the child is from what is the name and obviously by observation which is very important part of taking case study we know the gender of the child and by the name of the child we can understand which religion which place which community the child belongs to especially in indian conditions it is very important to understand and know because we are culturally driven people though in psychology we believe that we all should be um absolutely objective yet again knowing about the knowing and understanding the person in the scenario in the concept in the 
cultural scenario, cultural setup is very, very important. Secondly, when we take the case study and we have successive people who are coming to meet us, we can always go back and refer to that record. I'm underlining the word record. Why? Because the tendency to overlap or to forget is very common, especially when you are a busy person. And as you must have seen in your colleges, you are given admission number or in your hospitals, you are given reference number. Case study also should be having, should be given a referral number. The referral number is generally easier for the person to refer back to that person. How you catalog your case study material is always dependent on you. There are international levels, international standards, which help us to, which help us to understand and um, do our things better. So what we have to do is we must know the exact method of doing the data collection, as we say. So what we generally say is, Not your uh, mic. Achha. Am I audible now? Am I audible now? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Audible now. Ji. So when we talk about, it is to gather the information to create a profile for the subject. And then to know about the subject's background. And we understand what are the presenting problems and the subject symptoms. And eventually, we analyze the data and create a tailor-made, um, sorry, tailor-made program for the person. And you, interestingly, now a place like NIMHANS, which is uh, National Institute of Medical uh, Mental Health and Neurological Sciences India, which is one of the top-notch institutes, has also given their own case study method. What we can do is we can always download it and we can always, now that we are working as a team, we can always have a specific way of doing or writing the case study, right? And because I'm sorry, my, my other, um, sir has already given uh, this performer, but, and has given a case study also, but I would like somebody to, um, Volunteer, if possible, volunteer to be the to be the uh, person whom we can take, whom we can talk to, and uh, do the case study. Is it a is it a possibility? Anybody who would like to volunteer, please, and you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself, and um, otherwise, I can take my own also. I can take my own also. Anybody who would like to volunteer? Um, you can go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Achha, Rashmi has Rashmi. Rashmi, would you like to volunteer? That's so nice. Rashmi, I'll be asking you the questions and you can keep on writing or you can unmute yourself and we can work on. Right? Your name is, as I can see, Rashmi Dharmashi. <clears throat> what is your age, Rashmi? Your uh, age is? Ma'am. What is that, ma'am? What is that, ma'am? Uh, ma'am, uh, because the questions it is having in depth... Uh, Personal aspects. Uh, I don't think it will it will be uh, proper to. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, sir. So I will be doing in in a different manner then, right? So I'll be talking about like my name is Dr. Vinita Dua. Age is fifty eight. Gender um, a, a female. Native place Delhi. Living in urban setup. Residential address. Educational qualification. PhD. Can speak. Two languages, right? Uh, three languages can speak. Two language. Mother tongue is uh, Punjabi. Religion is Hinduism. And then we can always have little more in depth. As Sir has also said, my occupation, a school counselor, income. Of course, can we can always ask the person whether they are interested in disclosing certain things or not. Generally, in India, we say we should not uh, keep anything confidential as far as. Uh, the doctor, um, your psychologist, or your lawyer is concerned. 
But yes, place of referral, we can always put down our address. Whether I am a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian is clearly I am a vegetarian, I am married. And again, about my family, it's very important for all of us to know, am I obese? Hey, this is again, we divide it into the childhood data. And sometimes even when, because I am working with the school, I always try to take prenatal history of the person also and postnatal history of the person. Very interestingly, I just use this as an example. I always ask the parents whether your child cried when she was born. Why? Because the moment the child cries after, it has a very strong biological significance. Because that means the, the oxygen has reached the brain and the child is responding. You must have seen in movies also, if the child is not, the child is whacked so that the child cries, that means the oxygen, the lungs, they are functional. And many a times, uh, coming from my own experience, if the oxygen reaching, if the oxygen does not reach the brain, the brain starts slowly working at a slower level. And can, um, of course, um, been seen in slow learners, children with mental retardation, or we say, as we say, they are differently abled. So in differently abled, many a times, there are genetic studies which are required. So what we do generally, it's, it's one common uh, format that we use is knowing a little more about the background, interests, hobbies, tastes, uh, reservations, so that we can conclude. But for specific reasons, suppose I have given you a child coming who's not performing very well. So we always ask about the prenatal and postnatal. Another example could be marital discord. I generally go into the parental history, generally take uh, the child, I mean, the person's preference and generally take the reservations, generally take, because when we talk of CBT, when we talk of REBT, we have to see where the emotions have, that there, there is dynamic proportion to emotions also. Where are these emotions coming from? What was the development of these emotions? What is the child, what has the child witnessed? What was the parent's uh, marital relationship? It always helps us. Uh, psychologist or the person in question to understand how the things will proceed in future also to make a proper, not only diagnosis, not only treatment, but also prognosis. Prognosis means how the person will work in future. So case study format is very important. And as I told you, we can have, we can devise one for ourselves or we have one given by Nimhans or we have once one given by APA, that is American Psychiatric uh, Association of Psychiatry or um, Psychologists. We have a number of things. Only thing I always say that we can always have a uniform form, uniform form, so that generally later, for not only for referral, but for the research purposes, case studies come very handy. The simplest case study for research, Giving an example from the research background, when we talk of children coming from alcoholic background or girls coming from uh, broken families, children coming from, for that matter, have a different outlook, a different perspective, as Sir says, a different mind map. And when we know where it is coming from, it is always easy to create a tailor make um, assessment. And your assessment, diagnostics, the real assessments will also be dependent on these. Suppose the child has a history of obesity, then obviously we have to get the diabetes, pre-diabetic checkups done, hormonal checkups done, and all those medical checkups done are also dependent on the first initial case study structure. Right? And this is... Very important. I wish, sir, I can, um, if possible, somebody can share uh, the screen. If at all, we can show the format that we have used. Mm. Yeah, I, will, I will show it, ma'am. Okay, yeah, that would be very nice because my other, all of a sudden, it was working so well, my other device has stopped working. So I'm uh, really... No problem. No problem. 
sorry, just you can proceed, ma'am. Then yeah. I. Yeah. So we will give you, we have, uh, sir has devised a wonderful case study format and this is in depth and this can again be tailor made as I'm saying, dependent on, depending on the age of the subject or your client, the uh, problem that the client has come with, then again, if at all the client has some physiological issues or medical issues, we can always change it accordingly. Very common one that we can, I use in my school practice is one which has prenatal, postnatal uh, uh, educational history. But one that I use it with my own personal clients is a different one. Why? Because then I tailor make it with the basics being the same. That is age, name, occupation, gender, family history being the same, but then I tailor made make it according to the requirement of the person and ask the questions accordingly. Second part of the talk, which is uh, solution focused therapy, which is again wonderful. No therapy can take place unless and until we have the case study format. Because again, sir was talking about the miracle question. I am sure somebody must be taking that part up. I was told to take up the case history format, though I am, I am a trained solution focused uh, therapist also. Yet again, the miracle question is always dependent upon where, how we are going to focus on the solution. So a little change in the case study generally is good. Very interestingly, friends, I'll tell you one more thing. Case study format is generally a very long one. Sometimes when I was working in a hospital, when I was working in Safdarjung Hospital, doing my data collection for my PhD, it was 17 pages. It was 17 pages and the patient who had come or the person who had was accompanying the patient would get very um, unhappy. So one thing that I learned from that hospital was cut it short for the first time then you can keep on adding because everybody has a constraint of time, right? So we do the basics, then next part, the major part, we can flip over and we can, or we can leave it behind and come to the presenting complaints and how it is. So whether the complaint was gradual or immediate, all these things are part of the case study. And my doctors, the people who trained me to take the case study told me that you can skip certain parts for the first time and encourage the person to come second time. Whereas when I was working in a very different, very conservative hospital, they would say no, they would tell the client in the first go itself that it will take at least an hour because we will do the case study. And then in the second part of the um, second visit, you will be meeting the doctor. Sometimes the people would get a uh, little unhappy, but very interesting. This hospital also was very benevolent. They would call the client the very next day. I was working in the mental hospital where um, uh, problems are severe. So the person was just taken the basic symptoms when it started, what is, uh, where the place is coming from and immediately taken to a psychiatrist where the psychiatrist would give some medi immediate, uh, some medication would prescribe some medication for immediate relief of the symptoms. So friends, case study is super important. And the major part of case study is observation and sometimes the visit to the client's family also, talking to other family members as well, because our prognosis or other things are dependent on these things. So very important is for you to understand basic thing, that the basic demographic information is important and what is the urgency of the client who has come to you. Then after the client leaves the um, case study, or the, this place, hospital, or your own clinic setup, then I sit with that case study, make my own notes. That's again very important. Reach to a conclusion. And if you are working as a group with special educator or with a psychiatrist, then you have a case study, a complete thing where everybody gives the input, some points are written, and then the treatment plan is made. Then we 
tell the parent or the person who's looking after the client to take care of all these things, including the prescription, where again, the social worker helps the parent or helps the client's um, caretaker to understand how the medication has to be administered. So all these parts, that is why I told you, in one of the hospitals, it was 17 pages. It was 17 pages where everything and then this case study because it was a paperwork nowadays we get softwares also the paperwork was completed from time to time and the next step was decided and written and the dates were given then added uh, the next time visit again the same format was little more uh, filled up and added so in a clinical setting things are very different. In a school setting, things are very different. In a company setting, in a corporate setting, things are very different. And of course, we can have group data also. How? I have worked with executives. Sir has uh, been training us, and I have also worked with executives. I work with, I worked with executive stress. I would carry a questionnaire, a small one, very small one, and immediately give it to everybody after my small intro. That was the first activity we generally do. Write about yourself. It's very simple. Again, the same demographic things and all. And later on, when, whenever I would get the time, because if, if it was a two day or a three day um, work, workshop, then on the third day, that demographic um, information that I had collected was put into uh, some graf uh, graphical form and was given with inputs from the trainers. So we have done that part also. So I hope you people have a clear idea. And if uh, possible, we can look into um, some part of uh, the case study format. Otherwise, friends, there are number. Uh, thank you, Nazia. And there are a number of things that can be uh, manipulated, done, written, um, changed. And as I told you, your own observation is very important because how the client has dressed up, you always, when it depends on the age of the child, age of the client, you can always ask, who dressed you up? Who helped you to dress? You know, all those things so that we have a deeper understanding. Of course, the second part is mental status examination, which we are not going to uh, cover today. Give me an opportunity. We'll work on that also. And um, uh, Mina says, um, demographic um, information is very important. Thank you for uh, understanding and it, I hope, sir, I have fulfilled uh, the responsibility given to me because you had told me that I have to finish in 15, 20 minutes. No problem, ma'am. Ma'am, you have done a, ma'am, actually more than uh, anything, ma'am, the personal examples, ma'am. Ma'am, nowadays everything is available in it. Now yes, your sir. personal examples, ma'am, when you were working in the hospital, okay, See, uh, now I will show the uh, uh, format, etc. It is very difficult to uh, fill up everything sometimes. Okay, sometimes we may not be able to do uh, the thing, but uh, here, actually there are two aspects. One is when we are preparing for the college to submit a report. How is that data should be done? The second aspect is, uh, suppose actually when we are doing, uh, how that we can uh, uh, do the case history after uh, after our uh, counseling session so that it may help us in the future. So there are two aspects. So whatever man told, just I will uh, show you. Okay. I just I add one more point. Like in Delhi, I don't know about other parts of India, but in Delhi, when we do IQ assessment, aptitude assessment, either for career counseling, either for career counseling or for um, disability um, Checking what part of, because if you know, CBSC has recognized 21 disabilities and we have to get this. So, sir, the psychologist in question calls the client and the parent for three consecutive days so that the case study thing as well as the evaluation is done and then a proper report is uh, made and is given only after a week. So that is a hu huge procedure that we follow in daily. Yeah, everywhere now. So, yes. so ma'am has told only about this. Okay. I have a presentation, a small presentation, and I will also show you this uh, case history format. Usually this is a format, for example, 
uh, here it is a name. Usually we don't give the actual name. We give the uh, a pseudonymic name. So a name is Mary, age is 48, gender female, uh, native place, Chennai, place of living urban. And Vanita, uh, I'm told it is prepared by me. It is not prepared by me. Okay. This has been uh, extensively prepared by one intern uh, who is coming to me. Okay. She has uh, uh, made this. Okay. Her name is Durga. Durga, thank you, Durga, if you are available here. Okay. So she has only made all these uh, aspects. Okay. So uh, age 48, gender female, native Chennai, and the place of living urban, residential educational qualification MBA, language known to speak and to write, mother tongue, religion, religious sentiment, whether you are orthodox, middle orthodox, or not at all orthodox. In counseling, it may be very, very helpful. See, this uh, particular format we, uh, we have preferred, not only for the psychotic, the psychotic aspects, when you go for the psychotic aspects, it, uh, we may be concentrating more on the medical aspects. That also I will show you. Here, more or less, nowadays, uh, we give counseling for postmarital counseling, premarital counseling, anxiety, and uh, the other uh, depressions for which they may, uh, they may be coming to a psychologist. So, here, uh, understanding about their religious sentiments may be very, very helpful for a counselor to uh, take the counseling to the next level. Then occupation and income, uh, number of uh, siblings, birth order, source of information, crime, place of referral, Chennai, veg or non veg This can also uh, give us a very good, uh, it can give us some kind of clue about that inclusion, the food pattern and all. Marital status, married, occupation of the spouse, lawyer, occupation of mother-in-law, not working, occupation of father-in-law, lawyer, number of children, is it a normal delivery or cesarean, normal. A client stays with whom husband, position of the client in the family serial, then medical history. So in the medical history, height, weight, with this itself, we will be able to understand whether uh, somebody is obese or not. Okay. Are you obese? When did you uh, do your uh, master your checkup last? This, suppose a client is coming for the first time for uh, counseling. Okay. We are meeting him for the first time. We, uh, some of the aspects, uh, these are the aspects which we may require uh, when we uh, go to the session. For example, recently I had a counseling, uh, the first meeting, okay, I asked her, okay, what are the medical conditions you are having? Do you have thyroid? She told yes. Uh, Ma'am, uh, may I know what is the issue for which you have come? Sir, I am having a, 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 a severe stress. So I told, ma'am, are you, uh, have you consulted the doctor for thyroid? When did you test? She told, sir, that I tested her two years back. I told ma'am, before starting the uh, counseling, please go to a gynecologist. Okay. First, you test yourself thyroid, start taking tablet. Because of thyroid, also you may get the stress. All, there are multiple uh, uh, aspects related to mental condition. It may be the result of thyroid. So, uh, the simple aspect is uh, unless and until we have the uh, physically, we have to rule out before starting the counseling. This is what I used to do. Physically rule out everything. Physically, uh, the person is uh, okay. And the problem is in the emotional side. Suppose uh, a woman having PCOD problem. Naturally, they may have some uh, some kind of stress and other aspects. So do you have thyroid problem? Yes or no? PCOD? Are you diabetic? So she has said no for everything. You can see here. Yeah? Uh, no, no, no. Are you taking any medicines uh, regularly? Actually, here, a PCOD problem, yes. She is having PCOD problem. And what is the tablet she is taking? See, if she is able to tell the name of the tablet, that means she is educated. She will be able to understand when you talk uh, sensibly. See, there are some people, uh, just when we are talking, we will be able to understand whether they are able to, uh, uh, they will comprehend whatever we say. For example, cognitive behavior therapy. Psychoeducation is must. Psychoeducation is must means whether when we are doing the psychoeducation, whether they will be able to understand or not. That is very, very important. Na? So this kind of information, suppose uh, they are able to tell what is the medicine they are taking, that will really help us to understand uh, psychoeducation at what level we can get. Okay. Then uh, do you have IPP? No. Uh, whether you are physically fit? Yes, you are physically fit. 
So past medical history, yes, for uh, any hospital history, yes, for PCOD, surgical history, no. Then social history, smoking, no, alcohol abuse, no, drug abuse, no. Then comes the case consultation, conceptualization. So uh, what is the case? The case is Mary works as a human uh, resources manager for a large international organization. She is becoming more and more stressed at work as the company is constantly changing and evolving. It is, it is the requirement of her job that she keeps up with the uh, change by implementing new strategies as well as ensuring focus is kept on her main role as indenting new employees. She finds that she is working 12 hours days, six days a week and doesn't have time for her friends and family. She has started yelling at staff members when they ask for questions and when making small mistakes in their work. Concerned about her stress levels, Mary decided to attend a counseling session. Below is an extract from uh, Mary's first session with the counselor. Now the transcript. Okay, this I will uh, just uh, share it with all of you. Just go through it. Okay. Now we ask the talk, uh, we ask it, we try to find out what is our uh, issue. After finding out what is our issue, we, uh, we try to uh, come, come to the conclusion, what may be the problem. Here the problem may be our poor belief. Okay. So uh, we have to change the poor belief. So here we are going to apply cognitive behavior therapy. Suppose if we apply cognitive behavior therapy, session one, session two, session three, session four, how that we will move. So the whole aspect you can uh, we can give it as a case study. Now I will share with you uh, the presentation. So how that we can uh, move a step by step, step by step. How that we will be. Uh, what are the different aspects and how that we can uh, take. Okay, just uh, one second. Is it visible, team? Is it visible? Is it visible? Okay. I will open the. I am opening the chat box. I am opening the voice also. Okay. Now that you people will be able to uh, give your own inputs. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can anybody uh, can anybody read wherever it is required uh, input is required again. Can anybody read? Come on, quick. The record of information. Yeah. The record of information relating to a person's psychological or medical condition used as an aid to diagnosis and treatment. One minute. One minute. Actually, the voice is cracking. Someone else? Someone else? A record of information relating to a person's psychological or medical condition used as an aid to diagnosis and treatment. A case history usually contains test results, interviews, professional evaluations, and sociological, occupational, and educational data, also called patient history. Patient history or client history in a, a psychiatric uh, aspects, in a medicinal aspect, we will be calling it as a patient history. In counseling, when it comes to the normal counseling, we uh, call it as a client history. So, how to write a psychological case? Study? So, what are the important aspects? Now, the introduction, as she said, okay, history of the uh, presenting complaint, past psychiatry history, past medical history, family history, personal history, mental state examination, physical examination, summary and diagnosis, formulation and management. So here formulation is case conceptualization and uh, uh, how that we will be uh, attempting, uh, uh, attending the aspects. All these things can be put in a eight uh, steps way, eight steps. Okay, the first one is gather information. Okay, gather information through sources. Choose a case study method. Now case study, it has two uh, methods. Okay, there are two uh, types of case studies. One is prospective and a, a retrospective method. Usually in counseling, uh, uh, we will be doing only prospective method. Then uh, collect information regarding the client's background. So what are the uh, client's background which we will be uh, uh, collecting that already I have uh, uh, shown you in the word file. Okay, age, gender, employment status, health status, family members, relationship status, family health history, 
drug and alcohol history, challenges in life, life goals. In that uh, life goals, it is coming uh, in the third sheet. Uh, coping skills, strengths and weakness. Strength and weakness also uh, sometimes if the individual is very, very mature, we will be able to uh, write it. If we take it, it will help in uh, making the case history much uh, easier. And also a solution to the empowering the person will be very easy. Then describe the subject symptoms or problems. Now we have to uh, describe it. So uh, when we describe the problems, we have to uh, include emotional, physical, and sensory uh, symptoms in a chronological way so that it will be, uh, we will be able to understand. And I have an example for all these aspects. Example I will share with you. Okay. Now, uh, then we will be uh, going on to uh, the analyzing of the data and establishing a diagnosis. So when we establish a diagnosis, so here uh, what the psychologist will offer treatment using a therapy session, for example, baby CBG, baby REBG. Okay. Suppose uh, there are many websites, uh, particular websites, maybe uh, uh, one uh, counseling.com or sci uh, positive psychology. If you go there, you will be able to uh, see the case studies using different, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, therapy sales using REBT. Suppose, for example, mobile addiction. Uh, uh, how that we can uh, do the uh, counseling using a motivational interview. For example, uh, if it is family therapy, if it is family therapy, got uh, 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 the family therapy model, that is very, very useful. So uh, by using that model, how that we can give goals. So we will be choosing the uh, therapy sessions and we will be uh, uh, trying to tell the client, okay, this is what we are going to do and we will be uh, proceeding. So there are many uh, aspects which we can uh, follow. One is cognitive approach or humanistic approach, psychoanalytic approach and the pharmacological approach, this uh, usually the a psychiatric stress by prescribing drugs. Okay. So after identifying the uh, issues, okay, describe the treatment goals and uh, process. What is the goal and what is the process? What is the goal that we are seeing? See, in CBT, we tell that it is completely goal oriented. So we will be writing the goal and how it has to be handled. For example, in the case which I have shown now, Mary, the issue is uh, the belief, the core belief. The core belief. Uh, core belief is, I will not be able to handle the situation. That is the uh, core belief. I am not competent to handle this situation. Now, this uh, core belief, okay, why it has come? It has come because of uh, the various uh, uh, family aspects. So, if you apply the uh, cognitive uh, behavior, the step-by-step -step approach, we will be able to find it out and we will be able to uh, uh, chalk out a, a counseling plan which can be which we can uh, draft it very nicely in the case so uh, here can anyone read can anyone read this uh, yes, sir. yes sir can i yeah please please go ahead. oh so somebody is trying madam you please continue yeah, anyone, please go ahead, quick. Describe treatment goals and processes. After identifying a treatment approach, define the goals of using this treatment, how you intend to use the treatment, and any outcomes you expect to occur after treatment. The goals may include eliminating symptoms entirely or using the treatment to reduce some symptoms and implement coping strategies so the subject can return to a functional life. Okay. Uh, Tim, can you please mute your calls? Okay. So here, actually, it is very, very important that we have to uh, understand the various uh, terminologies here. One is we may be having goals to eliminate the symptom entirely. For example, if it is uh, if you are using CBT, eliminating symptom will be the goal. Okay. Suppose if you are uh, using solution uh, focused therapy. Eliminating symptom is not the goal. That empowering the client will be the goal. So what kind of therapy you use that decides your goal, that will uh, 
primarily decide what will be your goal. So it is important to document your treatment methods and monitor how the subject responds. For example, uh, as far as CBD is concerned, everything is recorded. Every each and every aspect it is recorded and it is shared with the client also, so that the client knows what is being done. So uh, writing a case history, if, if the client and the counselor, if they are having a copy of uh, making a making the habit of making a copy, making case history will be uh, very very easy. So then uh, write a discussion uh, section. The discussion section, if you, are, you could have seen in the last, I have given the discussion section on the uh, word uh, file. So in the discussions, you can review all the aspects, uh, how that you came to the conclusion, and uh, uh, what are the things uh, it came out during the counseling, and what is that you are suggesting. So uh, some tips is uh, always we should use the fictitious names, not the uh, original name. We have to refer to many case studies to understand how the format uh, can be used. See, there are uh, many formats. There are many formats. Uh, you have to choose the format according to the uh, aspect which you are doing. For example, I have seen many college students. Uh, they will be using the uh, same format for all the aspects. Counseling. Counseling, the format may differ. For psychotic, the, uh, uh, the, symptom, the aspects will, will differ. And recently, I have seen one aspect, uh, distance education. Okay, distance education, MSc psychology students, they have been asked to do a case study on schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, it has to be handled by a psychiatrist. A psychologist cannot handle. How a psychologist will handle a schizophrenia? Schizophrenia, a psychiatrist should handle and a clinical psychology student should handle. For a normal psychology student, asking the student to write a case study about this, that itself is a pathology. I do not know how uh, these things are happening. Okay, But these are the aspects happening uh, in many places. For a MSc psychology student, for a clinical psychology student, you can give it. How that it can, it can be given to the psychology student? Because a psychology student, he cannot do any kind of assessment. He is not empowered to do. Okay, then uh, why it is being given as a, uh, and the format, the format is the same format, whether you are uh, doing for a schizophrenia or whether you are doing it for a postmodern counseling, for everything, same format. No, actually the format differs. For psychotic aspect, the format differs. You people can just uh, go to AP, American uh, Psychological Association, and the formats are different formats are given. And we can use those formats. And we can also create a, a new one based on our own requirements. Now the case history, one example just I will uh, take with you, uh, just five minutes I will take. Okay. So uh, the first one is initial. We will be writing the introduction as man told. Okay. So here in the introduction, we will uh, focus on the, see when you read, now you should know what is the issue. So it is uh, just like a, a, a orientation to the reader. So you should have some clear and concise opening statement. The opening statement, say, it should contain all these aspects. Name, age, marital status, occupation, referral details, and central grounds. For example, can anyone read this? Can anyone read this? Yes, sir. Anyone? Julie, a 25-year-old single accountant, and a practicing Jehovah's Witness. Je Jehovah's Witness lives with her retired parents. She was referred by her family doctor with an abrupt onset of psychotic symptoms. This followed two weeks of lowered mood after the breakup of her first ever relationship, which was with a co worker who unexpectedly left to travel overseas. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, the simple aspect is the name should be given. Okay, the name. Okay, the age should be given. The age, the marital status. Okay, occupation. There are occupation. It is available there. A referral details. The referral detail is available. And the central problem. The central problem is uh, she is showing psychotic symptoms. 
followed by a lowered mood. So this is yes, small introduction. So introduction should be like this. Then uh, history of presenting complaint. So it is a detailed account. It is a detailed account of what is the problem of the client. Okay. So the, the detailed aspects will be right. We will be uh, uh, writing it uh, with the symptoms, uh, uh, with the uh, various aspects. For example, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the presenting symptoms. Can anyone read? The patient? Yeah. Please the, patient, the patient describes an eight-month history of an anxiety symptoms, which begins two months after a car accident. She experienced apprehensiveness when out of her home, inability to cope with anything out of the ordinary, initial insomnia and irritability, and she has withdrawn socially. More recently, she has had trouble concentrating on her work. Five days ago, she was taken to her local GP after experiencing a typical attack in the supermarket. She has become housebound since, ruminating that I am terrified of suffering a heart attack and dying suddenly like my mother. She has begun drinking up a bottle of wine a day in an effort, she says, to calm herself down and make things more bearable. Thank you. So if you see here, so what we will be writing is the central problem, common psychotic symptoms. The psychotic symptoms, if they are having, uh, if it is a clinical psychologist, if uh, this uh, particular problem it, uh, pertains to the clinical aspects. So uh, common psychotic symptoms, the effect on work. These symptoms, what is the effect it is on having on the work? And uh, uh, what are the impact of the illness on work, social relations and self life? So these all are the aspects we will write it in the, uh, the, uh, in the aspect of history of presenting complaint. So in that we will be writing this. The third one is the past illness we will cover. In the past illness, the detailed previous episodes of illness, uh, any admissions, treatments. So if you see the uh, word file which I have shown, so she was suffering from PCO. Okay. Particularly uh, if it is, uh, if we know that uh, extreme anxiety or uh, suppose big scale you have given and you are seeing that she is having more anxiety, then we should uh, try to understand any, uh, is there any uh, suicide attempts in the previous aspects, okay? Any kind of drug and alcohol abuse, all these aspects, it has to be uh, understood. So this is one uh, uh, aspect which uh, I will share with you people, which you can uh, read. It. So the simple aspect is, one is uh, Vanita ma'am, as Vanita ma'am told, uh, the practical aspect, everything we will not be able to do. But whatever we will be able to do is, these are the aspects we will be able to do it. These are the uh, uh, these are the aspects. Even on the first day, we will be able to take it very quickly. Okay, and this will help us to uh, do the counseling. This is one aspect. When we are writing case history uh, for the colleges, okay, so uh, we can follow your format. This uh, this is this one of this is the format uh, which may be useful for counseling purpose and there are many other uh, formats are also available and you can just uh, write the uh, uh, conclusion in the final aspect. So I will share with you uh, the uh, formats etc. I will share with you the, all the rules. Okay, this is a simple aspect. Uh, we just wanted to discuss about uh, the case history. So we thought, okay, we can uh, spend one hour on this. I think uh, a little bit of uh, clarity or a little bit of uh, information we were able to uh, gain. Any questions? Yati. Any questions? Any questions? We are having just five minutes. Any questions? So, uh, can anyone just uh, hear, uh, there are many people, you might have uh, already written some case studies, case history for the colleges. 
may you might have submitted to the college okay so uh, can anyone just tell your experience yeah uh, farah hasan please sir no i just wanted to ask this uh, case history thing can i do it with high school students also see uh, actually uh, the thing is here actually there are two aspects okay one is case study when you want to write for a college to submit a case study that is one thing okay the second thing you are a counselor and you are following it for your own purpose okay you are a counselor and you are doing the case history for your own purpose for all the counseling you have to do it. that will give you a very good uh, understand that will uh, give you very good understanding because for example for example a, a boy uh, with a, a suicidal tendency maybe you have given counseling and you have written everything all these aspects whatever we have written here na every aspect you have taken the next year uh, you are getting a same your client with the same aspect okay if you have written uh, if you have some written documents because you cannot always rely on your memory if you have a written uh, aspect when you just go and uh, refer it you will be able to understand for example uh, even psychologist even psychologist you will be able to understand if you are uh, if you are having the habit of writing case history you will be able to uh, know what is the tablet and what the tablet will do. see for example here uh, uh, your your tablet was given for busy only problem okay now suppose if you are writing a case history if you are writing and keeping it okay next time okay next time when somebody is coming with the same problem you can ask what kind of uh, tablet you are asking if first time somebody says some tablet name immediately you will go and search in the net and you will be able to understand na what is that drug and what are the side effects is that it so uh, that will also help you to understand about the issue so that you can refer them to a doctor see there are some, there are some uh, aspects always it has uh, side effects so immediately you can ask them to go to a doctor yeah uh, anyone uh, who has written a case study to the college and uh, can you share uh, any uh, any of your experience how that you have written sir if you will allow me just one minute just oh, yeah. one sentence i'll add to farya's thing that yeah. you if farya you just have to see and tailor made that make the thing because she said if we can use the same format for the high school you can see what is the purpose of using it for high school whether as a counselor whether as a research whether as what you have to see conceive perceive what is the problem and accordingly make the format there was another question i saw if the person is not willing so that that is why i have shared that you have to take the information from the sources possible maybe if there is a possibility suppose sir was giving a very good example of a schizophrenic obviously so schizophrenic may not be in a position to give but what happens the client's family members or the caretaker who has accompanied will be the right person to give the details of the case history right then of course there seems to be sir very interesting if you are reading the comments i have been reading people are not very happy with what things are being done somebody said the psychologists are only theorists it's really not true you know and the i feel some of them have a little um, uh, uh, they have a little unhappy experience work with us work with sir and your whole perception will be changed see uh, what fgk uh, fgk actually number is not that no problem no. see everybody has their own uh, 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 their own experiences their own perceptions uh, See, somebody comes to me and tell shomas i already went to two uh, i don't want to say whether it is psychology or psychologist because my intention is not to uh, insult anyone okay but they told underline okay they all look like uh, people who have come from uh, 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 what do you call uh, mental asylum sir uh, they are uh, the way in which they are looking the way in which they are acting but you are joking etc sir uh, how sir it differs so everybody has uh, i told it is your perception i told to those people and sir very beautifully the other day we had a session on rapport formation also so if the rapport is not con the connect is not formed if there is no rapport
then obviously many a time this may happen. So I apologize on the behalf of the whole community of psychologists. Please. No, 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 no need to, uh, uh, no need to apologize uh, to anyone. Uh, no, if at all somebody has had a bad experience, that is what I feel. Ki, that is little training or little something. No, Manita, we may not know, na. Because he's not had a full name also. Is that it? Yes, sir. sir, we have to quote Stephen Hawking as an example. The yeah. way if anybody visualizes and gives the comments of the, any profession, we have to quote Mr. Stephen Hawking, who has contributed a lot from yeah. what his inability yeah. of uh, uh, his physical or whatever the people call it as. Yeah. So we will uh, just ignore those aspects. Everybody has their own perception. During COVID, even people used to comment about doctors. <laughs> There are other things are, uh, we have to ignore. So thank you, team. Uh, I think uh, we uh, see every Sunday, we would like to uh, take a subject which may be helpful for people. Uh, today, Vanita ma'am has given her own personal aspects. And uh, definitely, uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will take this forward. We will take this forward. And I will try to give uh, some case study uh, model which is completely uh, written. Okay. Uh, at least uh, uh, we are uh, uh, learning some new aspects. So, can anyone tell? Uh, is there any new learning? Anyone? Anyone? With the feedback, we will finish today's session. Yeah, team. Anyone? Anyone? Please open the mic. I think yeah. it was very informative today, and I learned a lot. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir, you know what I think Vanita gave us a very good explanation is that yeah. you don't um, overwhelm the person with all the questions, and then you can get the information as you in, as you consult with them gradually. I think that's a very good idea. Uh, Pasila, uh, she herself is a psychologist, uh, and she is joining from. Uh, I think South Africa, isn't it, Bazila? Thank you very much. Thank you yes, very much. Sir, today sir if any printed for, sir, if any printed format which you can share with us as an example by any chance, like APS are there, can you I, please share with us, sir? I will share it in the group. Okay. And uh, lovely, sir. Uh, Thank you. We will do one thing. I don't want to. Uh, okay, one minute. I'm just typing my number. Okay. Please text to this number. Okay, 9862-2022. Because when we share it in the group, I do not know who is using, who is just... Uh, because people do not know the value of something which they get free of us. Please take to uh, this number. We will uh, share the today's presentation and also the uh, format. And the format that the uh, uh, appreciation goes to Durga, who is doing internship with me. Okay. She is from Bhaktavashalam College in Chennai. So uh, the credit goes to uh, Ms. Durka. Thank you very much. Tomorrow our premarital and postmarital uh, uh, is going to start. If anybody wants, kindly join. It will be a seven days uh, journey, uh, a journey of understanding uh, uh, the family life. Thank you very much. Bye bye.